Amen. Hello and welcome to the Daily Bible Reading Show. It's nice to see you. How are you doing? We're looking at Psalm 110 today. So let's pray for God's help to understand the psalm. Heavenly Father, help us to understand Psalm 110 and how it points us to see Jesus as he truly is today. We pray this in his name. Amen. Psalm 110 of David, a psalm. Verse 1, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Uh, sounds familiar. I should, you know, Jesus quotes this psalm. At the end of Mark chapter 12, they've been asking him all kinds of questions and Jesus pulls out this psalm. Psalm 110, ta-da! And then sit at my right hand, the Lord says to my Lord, and then they all go, whoa, and they don't ask him any more questions. Because Jesus says, this is a psalm of David, talking about the Lord God, speaking to his Lord. You know, there's this a promise that God is giving to a descendant of David, the Messiah, and Jesus' point is that this descendant, this heir of David, is going to be greater than David. Uh, Jesus says, how can David call his son his Lord, my Lord? And what God promises him is that he will destroy all his enemies. I will make your enemies a footstool for your feet. He will conquer everyone who opposes him. And this leads on to verse 2. The Lord will extend your mighty scepter, your rule, from Zion, so from Jerusalem, but beyond that, you know, expanding his territory, you will rule in the midst of your enemies. That's interesting. You will rule, but then there will be opposition in the midst of your enemies. Verse 3, your troops will be willing on your day of battle, not force. You know, they will, they will want to serve you in this way. They want to fight for you. Arrayed in holy majesty from the womb of the dawn, you will receive the dew of your youth. Uh, like source of energy, I guess, you know, womb of the dawn, the beginning of the day, there's like dew on the ground. And so it's, he's ready, you know, ready for battle. And it could be describing just his energy level, I guess, you know, dew of the dawn, maybe his troops, you know, lots of you know, bits of dew on the grass, I guess, imagine. Maybe that's his troops, you know, maybe that's a picture of his followers of his kingdom. Lots and lots of people following him. And again, being part of his kingdom. Verse four, the Lord has sworn, again, God swears again, and will not change his mind, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Now that should be familiar, it's from Hebrews, um, talking about that greater priesthood in the order of Melchizedek. That's what um, the argument from Hebrews is. But this is talking about king, Melchizedek, king of righteousness, but he's also a priest forever in this order of this king. Jesus brings together this two offices, king, priest, priest, king, together in Jesus, that is greater than both the king, greater than both the priest as well. He combines them because he is this ultimate combination. Like, you know, think of Voltron combining all the different, that, that's a bad, forget that, forget that. Anyway, he combines the two offices. Verse five, the Lord is at your right hand, he will crush kings on the day of his wrath. He will judge nations, heaping up the dead and crushing the rulers of the whole earth. He will drink from the brook beside the way. Therefore, he will lift up his head. So there is that opposition again, but from other kings. You know, he will crush kings. He will judge nations, heaping up the dead and crushing the rulers of the whole earth. So it's a picture, therefore, of how there will be this battle between this ultimate Lord that God has chosen, but other kings are opposing him. Other kings want to be king. And I think there are two foreshadowings here. First of all, that maybe might point forward to that ultimate battle at the end of time. There'll be this huge battle, like, you know, opposition before God and Jesus will come and judge and destroy all of them. But I think this immediately foreshadows the cross. You know, Jesus is on the cross and he might seem to have been defeated on the cross by all the rulers of the land, all the religious leaders of the land. But actually the cross is the means by which he defeats all the enemies under the powers of the age. All the rulers, therefore, are not just talking about early kings, but I mean mnemonic kings, you know, heavenly powers, everything arrayed against them. He defeats them by his death on the cross. 
and therefore this picture of life at the end you will drink from the brook beside the way you will lift up your head it's a picture of the resurrection God raises him up gives him life and gives him this renewal again yeah and that's Psalm 110 what do you think I think the, the basic idea here is that you know the kingship of Jesus the lordship of Jesus the, the kind of loftiness of you know who of Jesus is as in Mark chapter 12, it's much higher, much loftier, much more glorious than we could ever imagine. And the idea here is that don't underestimate the power and the glory of Jesus, especially on the cross, especially what God accomplishes and exalts upon Jesus on the cross. As he dies, he destroys all the enemies of death and sin and slavery over us, and he becomes himself the ultimate king and priest forever before God at his right hand. That's where he is right now. That's who he is right now, this ultimate king, ultimate priest at God's right hand. That is Psalm 110. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this ultimate picture of our ultimate king, who is our king, who died for us, who was raised for us, and now sits at your right hand. We thank you, we praise you for him in his name, in Jesus' name. Amen. 내게 다, 다, 다가와줘. 날 바라봐줘. 날 사랑해줘. 너 하나뿐이야. 다, 다, 다가와줘.